Okay, so uh, right. what are we talking about today? All right, so why your body stores fat in certain areas and what to do about it. Okay, so let's talk about like what's going on hormonally that causes you to gain weight, all right? Um, you know, fundamentally, it's a stress problem. Like at the, at the heart of it, when we um, look at the reasons for weight gain, like obviously it's hormonal, um, but if we could put it in its simplest terms, we're looking at a stress problem and a body that doesn't, uh, that isn't dealing with that very well. Um, and then we've kind of got to dig around and get to the root of what is causing that stress problem. But what I can tell you is, is that fat is definitely a coping mechanism for the body. Yeah. All right. And, um, and so that is really a, um, a great kind of setup for what we're going to be going into tonight, which is why your body uh, stores fat in, in certain areas um, and what to do about it. But first, you've got to have that understanding about why it is that that's happening. So the three things that we're going to cover tonight are what causes your body to store fat in certain areas, um, what to do about it using exercise, nutrition, and uh, Leanne for homeopathy. Um, and then we're going to go through some case studies at the same time so you guys can um, get a bit more of an understanding with some examples. Okay, so let's talk about first what um, about the different body types. So, you know, you'll know when you uh, when you look at uh, your body that there'll be certain areas that just really, really annoy you. Okay, now you kind of have to do you kind of have to look at your body with a grain of salt because there might be certain areas that really annoy you more than others. But what we really want to see is how your body is actually shaping because body shape gives us clues as to uh, what is happening um, hormonally and the, the glands or organs that are responsible for producing those hormones. So if you store fat around your midsection, for example, which is one of the most common complaints I have in terms of trying to get rid of stubborn belly fat. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> if you have... That can be stubborn pretty stubborn. Fat, yeah, it re and, and, and it's frustrating because people who have problems with stubborn belly fat try and target that area where they just want to do uh, exercises around uh, that core area, but you can't spot reduce. You can't lose fat from areas like that through targeted exercise. However, we can look at what is causing uh, the problem there, and it's your adrenals. So your adrenal glands are situated um, just on top of the, the kidneys. There's two little glands that are responsible for making um, adrenaline and cortisol, which are both stress hormones. And so when those hormones are overworking, they're working too hard for some reason, um, for some reason, then what happens is your body starts to lay fat stores around the organ um, or gland in order to protect it. So it literally is a survival mechanism that your body has uh, got turned on there. If you store body fat around the lower half, right? So if you look and you're a real hourglass shape and if the type of fat that you have is, is stubborn and cellulite um, then you're looking at an estrogen problem or an ovary problem. All right, so when the reproductive um, hormones start to uh, show that they are um, in trouble, then the body wants to lay fat stores around the ovaries in order to protect it. And, um, and if, you, you know, if we think about when a woman is pregnant, uh, the body will lay will will increase its levels of estrogen to lay fat stores around that area um, in order to protect the fetus, right? So it's definitely a, um, a, a another example of a survival strategy. So if you uh, if you look at your your body shape and you're not storing fat in any one particular area, but you see that it's around your arms, it's around your back, um, around here in the in the neck and in the face and also in the um, the belly and in the thighs and legs, then what then what we're looking at is a, a thyroid um, slash liver problem. All right, so when that happens, um, it's be, it's a little different because your thyroid is responsible for producing hormones that go into every cell of the body, and so therefore more of a global kind of a weight gain. So. Um, you, some of you might also notice that you have uh, like this, like under the bust, like a fatty roll, or you might find that you're quite firm in the stomach, right? And in guys, we'd say that it's a pot belly, but in women, we just see that it can get quite firm or a roll produces just under the bust. And that is another indication that the liver and the, or the gallbladder is really uh, stressed out. Okay, so 
So we definitely know that there's a link between uh, the, the hormones that are being overproduced, the organs and the glands that are responsible for making them. And that gives us a, a clue as to, as to where to start. So, um, so that gives us a, um, an idea there about where to start. But then we need to figure out, all right, what is it that we do about it um, in terms of getting rid of that problem? And, uh, and this is why I say it's, if you really want to get to the bottom of addressing stubborn fat, you can't address it the ways that the mainstream nutrition experts are telling you because it doesn't take into consideration that you have a, a, um, a hormone problem. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't assume that. It assumes that you have a perfectly good working metabolism, right? That you have a perfectly good working endocrine system and it's not the case. And so we have to assume that it's not in good working order and address it from that perspective. So what to do about it using nutrition. Um, and I really take care of the nutrition, exercise and health coaching aspect of it. And then and then we go to uh, we use homeopathy with Leanne to address what's going on from more of a natural medicine point of view. Okay, so if we look at what needs to happen nutrition wise and exercise, um, I'm going to go through. Or Leanne and I are going to go through what to do with each of the individual body types. Okay, so let's start with the midsection because that one's got to be like the most common stubborn fat uh, area, right? And it's and it's not surprising because it, it, it stresses, like I, I mentioned in the beginning, fundamentally the um, the problem. So for most people, it's going to start as an adrenal or belly fat problem and then kind of cascade as you continue to stay in that state into a, a thyroid or an estrogen problem, right? So we need to focus on nourishment, right? We've got to make sure that um, the adrenal body type is not, um, is not in a, a situation where any more uh, cortisol is being produced. If you, you diet yeah. or exercise in a way that causes um, more adrenaline um, and more cortisol, then you're going to be making that situation even worse, which causes a muscle wastage problem. And so typically what we find is, is that you lose muscle tone in the, in the legs and the thighs, and in actual fact, your waist can become bigger, right? Your body's trying to deal with all the. Uh, uh, actually, let's not go into that. I'll, I'll overcomplicate <laughs> it. <laughs> I'll overcomplicate it. But it's not unusual to find that the lower body gets smaller and um, and you get you get thicker around the midsection. It's really important that when we when we look at uh, calorie deficits, that the calorie deficits themselves are not too big. Very very important because. Creating a calorie deficit is essentially what is, uh, it's, it's like the, the key to losing weight, right? It's, you can do everything else right, but if you're not in a calorie deficit, you, you won't lose weight. And so we have to make sure that that's happening. However, what most people are doing is, is that the deficits that they are creating are just too big, and that in itself is another stressor. So we have to make sure that the plan that an adrenal body type is following does not create too large a calorie deficit. And then in terms of exercise, we have to make sure that the type of exercise that is being done doesn't trigger too much adrenaline, right? Yeah, and adrenaline, it's like adrenaline in itself is a fat burning hormone. And it's one of the reasons why uh, exercise is such a great contributor to fat loss, right? As well as creating calorie deficits. But if someone has a problem with adrenal glands, um, then we, the last thing we want is for the body to be in a state where you're triggering too much, uh, even more adrenaline. So from a health coaching perspective, that is how we really need to address the adrenal body type. Leanne, from a homeopathic uh -huh. perspective, what, <laughs> okay, what, do you, what do you notice about a person who is holding uh, stubborn fat in this area? Around the midsection, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, instantly, everything you've said is uh, correct, and I would look at that and take that into account in my clinic. The um, you know, and it's often the uh, the lifestyle that we have at the moment of you know sitting is the new smoking. They say you know right. it's not the right kind of exercise, and um, and then we're sitting around and we're highly adrenalized and highly stressed and responding to our day and all the different things that are happening in the day as if, you know, our life depends upon it. Right. 
Yep. You know, and that can be the rush hour drive. Dr. Libby Weaver wrote a book about that and called it rushing woman syndrome. Yeah. So, um, so that's, that's the adrenalized thing. And, you know, in homeopathy, we have a remedy uh, called adrenalinum, uh, but there's another one that we have called cortisol, cortisolinum. And when I give cortisol, I don't do it very often, but when I give cortisol in a homeopathic remedy, the actual effect when we give a hormone homeopathic remedy back to a person, um, the actual effect is uh, it can help balance the uh, hormones, but also it can help balance the tissues in their assimilation of those hormones. But right. actually what I found when I gave cortisol to women who were in that rushing woman state is mm. they suddenly became very, very aware of how they never relaxed. They never stopped. And, right. um, and actually how much they were in that state, which I thought was really interesting. Really interesting mm. that they got that awareness. I had one yeah. woman who... <laughs> funny hey so tr- it's so true they almost think that there's something wrong with them because they're calm and they're kind of like i can't quite put my finger on it but i feel like i'm just not quite myself and it's that yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah. they're confused because they feel better <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. right that's that's when they start to recognize what the healthy state is and mm. because they haven't been in that state for so long they don't recognize it when i give mm. cortisol to a woman i had one woman who who took it while she went away on holiday. And on holiday, she actually became aware of how she didn't even stop and enjoy her holiday. She was constantly connecting with the office. She was running around doing this and that and the other and jamming everything in because these kind of A-type personalities or these people that have been on the go for so long are used to jamming everything in, right? I'm going to do yeah. more, do more, do more. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that, that whole way of being that needs to be unwound. Um, mm-hmm. And of course, anything when there's stubborn belly fat, um, I'm, I because the, when the adrenals and the cortisol's out, you're going to produce more estrogen. And that mm-hmm. intra-abdominal fat that you lay down, that estrogen helps you lay down, actually then produces more estrogen, right? So you end right. up being in this terrible cycle. Right. Um, and of course, if the liver's not processing, because the liver cleanses the blood and processes these hormones, and mm-hmm. if liver's absolutely stuffed up, and chop yeah. a block of all the fake estrogens you get when you drink plastic water out of plastic <laughs> yeah. bottles, right? It's not and you get the, plast- the mm. plastics that go yeah. in and they lock in and get stored in the liver as fake estrogens, which then yeah. help produce more fat, right? So there's mm-hmm. all of that that I'm looking at and taking into account. Mm-hmm. But if I look at the adrenals, the adrenals, there will be some issues around fear and fright because that's what an adrenalized state is. And yeah. sometimes that can go back to early childhood. Right. Yeah. So that's um, where we find are like past traumas or, um, yes. or when a person believes that they were in a, uh, and it's very common for that to be led back to childhood because we, 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 we're grown ups now, but we still have the memories through childlike eyes. But that's we're, right. The cellular we're, memory. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so sometimes, you know, we are responding to our day-to-day stress as if we're back in that situation. Mm-hmm. So there's that. And, of course, when I, I always think when I see a woman with this uh, wide waist and this big um, tummy mm-hmm. where they're laying down the fat, um, yeah. you know, sometimes I want to step out of their way because they're often very determined, you know. They're like, I'm coming through. And yeah. so determination is that uh, liver energy. And again, you know, when you're doing this, when you're stuck in that lower will, that determined liver energy, you're often used to achieving goals. I'm going to achieve this. I'm doing this. I'm determinedly pushing through. I'm pushing myself past my physical resources. I'm going to achieve this goal no matter what. Um, and sometimes it's the wrong <laughs> use of will yeah. yeah, and determination and that liver it's energy. It's like self-destruction. <laughs> it is. Because then yeah. you accumulate all this resentment and anger yeah. and, and where does it sit? In the liver. Yeah. And that impacts right. the function. You know, the pancreas is right there. We're starting to get insulin um, resistant with all this, this uh, belly fat that keeps producing this estrogen. It's really so. just a whole kind of cascade of problems, right? And so when we talk about adrenal fatigue, because this was kind of like an adren- adrenal fatigue was just this word that got thrown around for quite quite some time there. And everyone kind of, I'm pretty sure like eight out of 10 women resonated with having adrenal fatigue. And I had people asking me, like I telling me, I'm pretty sure I have adrenal fatigue. The reality is, is that 
everyone goes through adrenal fatigue at some point or another to some degree. And I believe that there's about four different stages of adrenal fatigue. We probably go in and out of stage one to two quite often, but it's when you get to those three and four stages that it's, it's a real problem. However, what I've realized is that adrenal fatigue is still really a surface problem. It's still really just a, yes. a, an indication. We've got to find out why adrenal, why the adrenals are in the state that they're in, what's causing them to overwork. Sometimes it can come, it can be a, uh, it can stem from a gut issue that's causing the adrenals to overwork. And it can be stemmed from something psychological, like a past trauma or, you know, or it could be a true, you know, where the adrenal glands themselves have gotten to the point where they have become damaged. However, what I've seen is, is that it's not always in a, uh, adrenal fatigue is, is a, a blanket statement for yeah. uh, many symptoms. And we often have to dig a little deeper to find out what is the underlying cause of that. Yeah. And often, you know, the, um, I know I'm supposed to be talking like the homeopath, but uh, actually with the adrenal fatigue, the, the, some of the latest research is showing the body sometimes is just keeping uh, the cortisol production really low so the adrenals aren't even firing possibly uh, yeah. properly in the first place and the body mm. is purposefully doing that because yeah. if you had more vitality and more energy then it yeah. would detox and you've got yeah. too much stuff so this can be <laughs> yeah. chemical toxins because yeah. your council keeps spraying the berms with roundup it could be um, where you live in, a, in an orchard, you know, and you've got all this chemical toxicity. Uh, it can actually be, actually, your nutrition profile is not very good and you're really mm. lacking or for and some reason you can't absorb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so, so true. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so the body's really amazing. It will suppress mm. that adrenal function and people will come in and go, I'm adrenally fatigued. And, yeah. well, actually, no, you're not. There's, there's yeah. definitely something else going on. Mm. So it isn't, it isn't a, um, a, a straightforward... Um, it isn't a straightforward uh, answer, I guess, right? Even no. though it seems like a straightforward question. But in terms of like, in terms of uh, exercise and nutrition, you know, the approach has to consider keeping those adrenal hormones stable, right? Everything yeah. has to be around keeping the whole, the the body as a whole in a stable environment, so that we can create the right environment because. The better the environment is, then it means that the body is able to perceive that there's, you know, a bit more vitality or a bit more health so that when it is ready to detoxify, that it feels like it is more able, it's more likely to, to feel that way, yes. right? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah which and, means that uh, people arrive in a much better state when they come and see you to have, uh, to have the, the remedies actually do their work more effectively, right? Yeah, absolutely. And often when I give a remedy, so... If someone comes and sees me and they're really chronically sick and they're sitting there saying I've got um, adrenal fatigue and I can't lose weight and I give them a remedy, uh, very, very often the body will immediately within the first week or two show up what's what's causing or what's contributing to the adrenal fatigue. So what would be an that's... example? What would be an example of what you mean by show up? So, um, so say they come to me and we identify that they're, um, uh, I don't know, that they are stressed out and they respond to stress by becoming very irritable and right. um and then they withdraw and i give them a remedy for being irritable and withdrawing that's a very right. simplistic thing yeah, yeah so I it's a beautiful remedy yeah. it matches some of these symptoms and we go yes this is good and it yeah. is so good because it increases their vitality a little bit and next thing they come back and they're busted out with uh, an old rash or a boil that they used to have and i'm yeah. like oh yeah. okay so you've got a bit of staphylococcus in the background have right. you had um uh, a skin infection before or antibiotics before or a staph infection oh yes i have yeah. so the body's body pushing it out yeah mm -hmm. yeah and if someone's yeah. really you know when i when i see people with stubborn fat it's often uh you know in their 40s early 40s late 30s after kids and you've got 40 years of um overuse of antibiotics and all sorts of infections that have been around and viruses um and of course the the gut function is often less than perfect. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. little so things will come up and it will happen very quickly. So as soon as mm -hmm. we get rid of the boil, then next thing, the next thing comes up and it's almost like your body has a big clear out yeah. and then uh, we can get down to business and just continue to support and support and support. And that's, that's really what detox, detoxification looks like. It's really not that pretty. I mean, yeah. when I, when I see, when I see like the, these, uh, 
these detox systems like the lemon and cane pepper detox diet that was real popular for a time there and the green juices and the I mean I'm sure that you like yes you give the liver a break and yes it doesn't have to digest spend so much time in digestion and and so and so forth hey Tash but you know the body suppresses these viruses and hormones and bacterias and things in such a way doing doing a, a, a lemon detox diet is not going to be able to get the body to uproot those things that have been suppressed for the last 30 years so anyway that's what I think about that but Leanne why don't we why don't we um, use a bit of a um, an example of um, how we worked with Wendy together because Wendy was a real uh, adrenal case and actually Wendy didn't have a lot of weight to lose and she didn't no. even come to me to lose weight she thought that that would be a nice added bonus but Wendy had a bit of a, um, a cancer scare. And so she really did come to me in a, in a very adrenal state. <laughs> I mean, yeah. this is about as adrenal as it gets when you, when you have a, um, a cancer diagnosis. But Wendy ended up losing in total, um, I think it was like nine kilos in five, in five months. And she didn't even, she hadn't even tried. Right. And then, yeah. and then the next time that she came to see me, she lost another, she lost a few kilos, um, around her midsection and, you know, and I'll stick a photo of her up later. She looks absolutely fantastic. But, you know, when, when I sent her to you, how, how was it that, uh, tell me what it was like from your perspective when, when Wendy first came and saw you without going into any gory details about her. I mean, I did yeah. get permission for, for us to use, um, Wendy's story, but, um, yeah, like how did how did you how did you treat Wendy? Well, what was the okay, first thing? So, so the very first thing when um, because she'd come and she'd had the cancer diagnosis and had um, resolved that um, allopathically or with normal medicine, the uh, the thing that I'm most um, uh, it's most important to begin treating or helping someone uh, if they've been diagnosed with cancer to um, help support the body so that the predisposition to developing it again in the future is not so much there. And how I do that is I'll actually take their original symptoms of where the cancer was and, um, uh, you know, what side of the body and what it was like. And I'll actually take those symptoms and use those as a basis to, for, as a prescription for the remedy because, right. and as well as taking in everything else that she'd come for, um, because I'm wanting, even though with cancer, you know, it's great to have surgery and remove it, um, the actual dis-ease, the predisposition to actually developing it is still there. That hasn't been mm. addressed by surgery. You've just mm. really taken out the symptom. Yeah. So um, in beginning to uh, treat Wendy, uh, I had to really look at uh, supporting her body and um, getting her into a better state of health so that she was yeah. much less likely to even develop yeah. that again. And a better feeling place as well, where she wasn't so, like, in that in that uh, stressed out, flighty, very fearful. I mean, she had a real fear yeah. of the cancer coming back. And, yeah. So, I mean, before you could even treat her, before you could even give her the remedies that were specifically for cancer, I mean, you had to work on those. I remember you working on some of those uh, surface symptoms that were, that were showing, which were more to do with... Um, not very, would you say not very cancer specific? Um, yes, there was some emotional, there was some remedies that I gave for emotional support. That was really uh, uh, what were presenting symptoms. So there was a little cough and, mm. um, and then working with the emotional um, symptoms around that and mm. what that was about. And that was one of the very first remedies that we gave mm. and which was really fabulous because um, it was really no different to the remedy that she needed to help strengthen her against cancer because in homeopathy, um, we have uh, a miasmatic um, influence, which is ancestors that have had to certain diseases and then right. we are weaker and more likely to develop them. Yeah, so what we're genetically predisposed to. That's right. Yep. And so the cancer miasm in homeopathy uh, really shows up with anxiety it shows mm. up with um, food sensitivities and sensitivity on all levels um, yeah. and worry and a real fear of cancer. So this is uh, immediately we're treating with remedies in that group of, of my, in that miasmatic group. Yeah. Um, 
and then making sure they apply. Yeah, we really had to. Um, I mean, it really was a, a classic case of peeling back the layers of the onion with Wendy because, you know, I remember. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I remember that happening. I mean, we really did have to peel back the layers. There was, you know, after after that initial remedy, then the next symptom would come to the surface, and then you had to deal with that one and address that one, and then, you know, so for the cough, for example, and be able to go remedy for gotta... that. We got a sore throat and kind of cold mm. symptoms coming up that needed to be addressed. Yeah. So it, that kind of we went through, and then we found a beautiful remedy that actually um, was would have been a remedy for uh, the cancer if she would come to see me then. So yeah. um, not yeah. that we treat cancer, but we support yeah. the body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, support yeah. the body. <laughs> yeah, support body. I mean, like I remember when um, I remember when we uh, Wendy had Wendy had real problem with bloating. So. From a nutrition perspective, we had to go through and, I mean, Wendy wanted to make some pretty uh, big changes. So it was unusual what we did in terms of the steps with her for, uh, from a nutrition perspective. You know, she went from uh, eating, you know, like averagely to eating well to eating vegetarian and then moving to vegan all in a very yeah. short space of time. And so making those shifts from one, you know, from one kind of diet to another diet, it's all about making sure that, it's still whole and it's still balanced and she's still getting the uh, enough protein, enough uh, carbohydrate and, and getting enough nourishment, you know, because when you start moving into these, uh, into when you start cutting out food groups, for example, you've got to make sure that you're still getting enough. Mm. And because she's adrenal, we have to make sure that she doesn't get herself into a state where the calorie deficits are too big. Because as you get into yeah. vegetarian and vegan way of eating, especially when you're eating very clean, um, Wendy did often fall into a state where she wasn't getting enough calories that would push her back into an adrenal state. I remember at one point she had real issues with the gut. And um, we sent, I sent her back to you to, to address that. Um, and we had a problem with mold in the house. That's right. right. And, uh, yeah, yeah. We yeah, did so have was, a problem with mold. Yeah, so she went through quite a bit and and kind of mm. unraveling, uh, uh, unraveling her her whole uh, picture of pictures of symptoms as she moved through and uh, from one picture of symptoms to another, and um, needed the energy for running the house and all the boys. Yeah, well, Wendy's a, a business owner, self employed. Yeah, um, she has an accounting firm and she has what have you got like five kids, Wendy? <laughs> so. Yeah, and uh, um, and a marriage, so she's a busy lady. Okay, so let's move on from Wendy, and um, let's talk about Vicky. Um, Vicky was uh, more of a thyroid body type, actually. The example, uh, and I put a picture up of, of Vicky uh, in the um, in the post there tonight as a reminder, um, because Vicky had just an amazing transformation. And um, when it comes to the thyroid body type, we talked about this overall weight gain right so not really in any one area and what we noticed is vicky uh, lost weight is is that her body that her body shape started to change and we shifted from thyroid to estrogen and adrenal right mm -hmm. yeah. so so as um so when we started uh, nutritionally what i did was with thyroid uh, which is also very closely uh, coupled with liver um, because the two of those uh, really talk to each other quite closely um, we have to make sure that the uh, we don't put too much stress on the whole digestive system. We have to make sure that proteins in particular are not uh, don't get too high because if proteins do get too high, it, it stresses the liver out. And we want to make sure that in that situation, in, in Vicky's situation, that um, we eased as much of the stress as possible on the liver from a nutritional perspective. We also need to make sure that she um, that she was and uh, not in a calorie deficit to start with because a thyroid problem has a slow metabolism problem. And so when we get into a, um, a sluggish metabolism um, where we should be eating is here in terms of, in terms of a, a healthy calorie maintenance, right? But often what happens when you have a thyroid problem is that the metabolism gets so slow that a person ends up operating here, right? And then when you, when you try and diet on that, you've got to make a calorie deficit here in order to lose weight. And so the gap ends up being like that big. 
which brings more stress to a body that is already under so much stress. And mm. Vicky had just been through the absolute ringer in terms of what she had gone through in, in her life. And she literally did not need any more stress in her life. Oh, and so we really had to make sure that exercise wise that she wasn't overdoing it either. And so Vicky was really, I guess you could say I prescribed her walking, <laughs> which <laughs> which was really um, what she was doing before that. So, and she had a, a really good, healthy um, uh, uh, routine with walking. And one thing I will highlight about about uh, doing walking, yoga, um, even going through a real steady stretch routine, you might not think that that is classed as exercise, but I'm telling you, if you think about it yep. this way, when you're in a when you're in an adrenal state, so when your when your body is is in a stressed state, like I mean, you're you're here and here all day, like you know, you're going from one thing to another thing to another thing to another thing, and you and you never really stop. There's always something to do, something to be done, and if you add high intensity or exercise that that works that same nervous system. It encourages an already hard-working nervous system to work even harder. You're pushing it just yeah. over the absolute limit. Whereas when you do exercise, that allows the heart rate to get just a, a, at a lower level but higher than resting, and you get a steady pace on, right? It, it, it helps the, the nervous systems to distinguish the difference between each other. So we can take the fight-or-flight uh, uh, nervous system and we can take the, the rest, digest, relax nervous system, which have become crossed, right, and confused, yeah. right? We can use exercise as a tool to uncross them and make and, and allow the body to recognize that, that it's not in a, a fight or flight situation. So, so nutritionally and, um, and uh, exercise-wise, that was really uh, the starting point for, um, for Vicky. So... Uh, Leanne, from a homeopathic perspective, I mean, Vicky was a, she wasn't an easy case because Vicky was really sensitive to the, oh, she was sensitive, so sensitive. to everything, right? To yes. e anything, right? Medication, yes. right? But then when we, but then when I sent her to you for homeopathics, I mean, she'd had an experience with homeopathy before and she was so sensitive to the remedies as well. Yes. So, I mean, I kind so, of sent her to you and I was like, here you go, Leanne. Fix, fix so, this. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, it was definitely, Vicky's been an amazing case and actually not hard to find remedies for. The remedies are very clear. They come up very clearly when I analyze a case and I'm um, looking at her symptoms. But um, the trick with Vicky is that there, there is that huge sensitivity. So we can't prescribe a lot of remedy we can't prescribe high potencies and we have mm. to go very 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 gently um mm. because her, her body was just um the nervous system was overwrought mm. but also when she first came to me um there was a major major systemic infection going on um, and it was all through the digestive tract and covering her skin. And her body was really unable to react properly through anything because it was constantly um, uh, having to deal with. And really, the bacterial infection was in control. So, um, And she didn't we, know that. She didn't know no. that that was, she didn't know that that's what was going on. So, I no, mean, I no. had to be, no, I mean, I had to be, I remember being right there with her and saying to her, Vicky, don't you know, just, just trust the process that your body's doing, your body's detoxifying, right? I know it's scary, but just, and she was so trusting. She was so ready to take the, she'd given herself the year to get well. Yes. Right? So she was really in it for the long haul, which was perfect because she, her body really threw some pretty big detox symptoms. Yeah. I think, you know, the, the wonderful thing about both Wendy and Vicky is that they're both really committed to the journey. Mm -hmm. And mm. it's it's really not about getting that quick fix and then we're off again because that's yeah. what we've always done and it's got mm. us to here. Right. So when Vicky came, we even had a bit of a scary moment in the office because um, she came in to pick up her remedy and took her shoes off at my door and walked on my carpet. And she's uh, highly sensitive to um, animal fur. So I vacuumed anyways. I've been vacuuming, made sure it was all right. And she still reacted and she started to have 
uh, you know, breathing difficulties and really mm. having a severe reaction. And um, what was wonderful is I was able to give her homeopathic histamine mm. um, to uh, uh, neutralize that histamine response straight away. And it worked within 10 minutes. And mm. I think at that point I got Vicky's trust and, um, and then she was a little bit more trusting and, and mm. able to really do this. So the very first thing that came up when, uh, when I saw his skin was I thought, oh my gosh, it's a Staphylococcus infection. Um, it just it's it's just the way that there is this uh, red spottiness and, and and fiery red inflammation that I have begun to recognise in my clinic. Right. And when I looked up her symptoms, um, her digestive symptoms and her um, uh, mind symptoms. Um, energy levels, it was all Staphylococcus. Staphylococcus right. uh, goes right through, often it will get in through the skin, it lives on our skin, it's a wonderful bacteria that normally mm -hmm. lives in balance with us, mm -hmm. but when it gets in, it can become systemic and when we have antibiotics, um, it still leaves the resonance and the imbalance of the Staphylococcus out of balance with all the other microbiome of your body. So um, uh, poor Vicky, uh, had this riddled all through her digestive system. It was way out of balance. So it was causing sort of, I guess you'd say, a leaky gut or a lack of assimilation. Mm -hmm. um, and when you've got a staphylococcus infection that's systemic, you can have brain fog and um, hard to think, all sorts of things. And there can be, um, you know, these bacteria and viruses, they do have an influence on your emotions. Mm -hmm. So when I have a child in my clinic with staphylococcus, they'll be more irritable than normal. Mm -hmm. um, I know and, that you know, well. It's, yeah, it's not just mm -hmm. a, a difficult personality in a child. It's it's actually they've got this yeah. bacteria that's kind of running the show. Yeah, actually, so, Vicky had such a big emotional shift that um, one of her staff members came came to her and said, "Vicky, something's either really right with you, or or something is really <laughs> wrong." <laughs> that's because good. She, just, she had not only the physical shift, but she just had such a big emotional shift yeah yeah and she wasn't even she was half kidding this woman was half kidding but she was actually also a little bit serious and, and a little bit concerned <laughs> <laughs> yeah. awesome yeah yeah okay yeah. well that's good so yeah, yeah that's where we had to really start and mm -hmm. um and that was wonderful because then it stabilized began to stabilize her a little bit more i mean very sensitive but began to mm. give her a little bit more stability so that we could work a bit deeper but mm. um dear vicky every time i give her a remedy she has a very strong response um but it, often her body's just showing me the next thing or showing yeah. me what she's needing alongside it's been incredible yeah i mean her uh vicky's level of vitality and when i say vitality guys what i mean is is that when your body feels vital it feels able to bring up any um, underlying viruses or bacteria or things that need to be expelled by your body. But if there's not yeah. enough vitality there, it'll keep it down until it perceives that there is enough vitality. Vicky's body was well ready to just let go of whatever was yes. needing to be let go of. And so she was very responsive to the remedies and it was just kind of coming one after the other, right? So you know, from a nutritional perspective, we had to be very, very, I mean, I literally kept Vicky at the minimum caloric deficit. So as yeah. not to cause that stress, because all the uh, energy really had to go towards nourishment, making sure that her body was getting enough nourishment. And I mean, as you can see, she's done fantastic with her weight loss. She looks amazing. She looks like a completely different person. But, mm. um, you know, I, I, I do, I have to take my hat off to Vicky for I mean she's still on the journey she's still got but she had a massive breakthrough last week and I mean of all the symptoms that have come back we had a real breakthrough last week and um and you know I guess from from my perspective when I'm working with a client who's also working with you like I mentioned last week I get really used to looking at um at symptoms and what I can see is is that if someone has a is showing a similar behavior and it's coming up like two or three times for example um vicky kept talking about being uh, feeling like she just wasn't able to um keep on top of her meal plan exactly how she would normally do it she was sure that she was doing a good job but you know there was some things going on with her family that was causing her to just feel like she had lost a little bit of focus but she couldn't quite put her finger on it and then it was again the second week that that happened again and that's usually when it's like a red flag for me because I'm like, all right, something's going on 
that is yeah. causing this person to feel like they are not safe. There's some kind of thing that's causing a real, uh, um, that's, that's triggering that real uh, stress and fighty flighty type of state. And so, you know, what I cottoned on to with, with Vicky was, is that the thing that she kept talking about had popped up in previous conversations before. And so I was able to identify it as a symptom. And then I sent her straight to you and, um, and she ended up, having a, a quite a big uh, detoxification mm. through the bowels um, yes. and yeah and mm. um, yeah and she yeah she noticed uh, I mean when she looked in the toilet <laughs> I'll try not to be too graphic guys but it was black <laughs> right yeah. and she said to me Taryn better out than in yeah right? and I'm like if you go to the bathroom and you look in the toilet bowl and it's black for sure you want that out, right? Yeah. I mean, so it's been a, it's, there, there's no, there's just no way that, you know, from a, a there's just no way that from a, um, for a person that wants to lose weight, lose stubborn fat, keep it off and feel their very, very best. There's just no way that that's able, that, that should even be entertained as a possibility without, some some sort of mechanism like how I found with homeopathy to allow mm. the body to to shed and and detoxify right yeah the uh, I think with Vicky's mm. case it was definitely about um you know although the staphylococcal infection was first shown on the skin um it was through the gut and then it's really been we've been working on stabilizing the gut and helping the gut uh, and then we had a bit of shingles virus come up so we had to clear that and that Again, the remedies given covered not only the digestive system, but also the skin. So clearing, clearing, clearing. These things came up one after the other. It was a little bit of a roller coaster ride. Um, but uh, the other thing, actually, that I think is worthwhile mentioning is um, when people are really adrenalized, uh, and sometimes we hold on to this extra layers of fat because the fear is actually, it's about boundaries, you know? And in many, many of my cases... Uh, when we're talking about stubborn fat um, and a hormone imbalance, there's going to be issues with boundaries, you know. So um, that liver area here is all to do with personal power and do you stand in your personal power appropriately or do you kind of um, let people walk over you like a doormat? So that's right. all sort of in that area, in the liver kind of area. So. I think that's um, an important part of all the cases um, that we treat mm. and an interesting concept to think about. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, like, in, in a way to kind of wrap it up, what I have seen since um, since making the shift and adding homeopathy in as a, as a real powerful tool to be able to help, to be able to really just, I guess, like, help women to just unleash, right? They're yes. figuring out who they really are. They're like who they really are. Yes. Yeah. Because what I see is is that these women they just they 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 have obviously they don't know that the way that they are feeling and acting and the and, and the way that they are being is a symptom of all the crap that's just in there, right? Yes. And so they really take these they really take this on as emotion as personal traits. This is who I am. This is just this is the way that I am. This is the way I'll always be. And, you know, it's yep. just, it's so, it's so destructive. And, um, and it's really, it's really not. And what, what I say is, is that the, the ladies who I work with, they are starting to, to realize, okay, this is not who I am. This is, yes. and, and I'm, and they're starting to figure out who they really are. And it just really is a, you know, put, puts a, a woman into a much, much better state to, make positive impact on all the people that she has influence with, you know, which is, yes. yeah, which is far, far more than just weight loss, you know? And then of course, if you've got the body as well, like winning. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, you know, that ties really well into the thyroid sort of body type, right? Because the thyroid and homeopathy is, is uh, well, the thyroid is the representation of that gland of the area of the body. That's all about your creative expression in the world. Mm. So, I don't know, you probably want to talk about the thyroid? Oh, well, I mean, we covered the thyroid with, I mean, Vicky was really thyroid when she started, right? 
in the time yeah. that I worked with her, we shifted from thyroid to adrenal and estrogen. So in yeah. terms of what I did with her, with her diet, we started off with, uh, with very moderate protein um, and uh, making sure that there was more vegetables and more, uh, and more fats in there. You know, and then when when she clearly shifted to more of an adrenal body shape, so what happens is is that as you lose fat, you can start to see where the fat is being held, and as it shifts, and you can see that it's really just hanging mostly around the midsection. I mean, that's pretty clear adrenal. And so as we yeah. move into that adrenal, it was like, okay, so now what we need to do is we need to shift protein, we need to raise that, we need to make sure that fats are not as high that. You know, so nutritionally, that's what we did. From your perspective, I mean, you would have just been addressing symptoms as we were going. But Vicky, yeah, she she really, um, you know, I I think I know what you were going to say about the the thyroid and the and the not having a voice. Yeah, there's not having a voice, definitely, because essentially, if you're expressing who you really are, you are not frightened to really express your authentic self in the world. That's worth speaking with people, with um, acknowledging your needs and actually know this situation. I don't want to do that. That's I don't even want to do that. So you don't. Mm. It's mm. being having healthy boundaries with people mm. um, and really, you know, expressing who you really are. You want to put a purple streak in your hair? You put a purple streak in your hair. You, <laughs> yeah. you want to dress however you want to dress? You dress that way. You mm. just have this freedom and that's very nourishing when you can. you don't have to hide who you are. And I think that's very healing. And when you are this rushing woman or you're busy, 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 adrenalized, sometimes you've forgotten about who you are in the world. Mm -hmm. And this is when we get these women who have uh, teenagers and suddenly the teenagers are really busy. They're not around much or they're leaving the house. And the women are like, oh, but I've been mother. I've been mother for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So who am I now? And it's because they have not kept in connection with who they really are. And it's a, mm. it's a, it's very, very important. Mums forget to nourish themselves. So yeah. creative activity is really important. Um, things that you kind of get you into the zone where you go, ha, ah, I'm really happy. I feel really fulfilled. Those are things that are very important to bring into your life on a daily basis. Mm. Because, I mean, even, you know, that even in itself is a trigger for, for weight, for stress and weight gain when some, because people will then look for that in food if they're not yeah. able, yeah, if they're not able to get that in, in life, they'll look for quick bursts of that in food and perhaps often it gets labelled emotional eating. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I'll nourish myself in, in that way. In that way, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, guys, I, you know, I, I really want to save the estrogen body type for next week and uh, and the ovary body type. And the reason why is because, you know, when we get into this area, we really are talking about sex hormones and um, and what that does to a woman when she's not feeling uh, like, um, you know, hormonally on top of it, when sex drive is low, uh, when she's not feeling like um, everything is right in the world, when when, you know, she's dealing with, ovarian cysts and endometriosis and polycystic ovaries which is just so incredibly common and periods and ugh, just all of that stuff and I thought man we could we could spend the whole session just talking about that really so yeah. I'm going to save the ovarian and and uh, estrogen body type until next week and Leanne and I will talk about that one all on its own and um, yes yeah Taryn, I want it? to I want to do a teaser. I'm gonna tell oh, everybody yeah. what a normal period is. Okay. And it's not what you think. Right, okay. Shoot. No, I'm telling that for next oh, week. Oh, that's, that's the teaser. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's my All teaser. Right. Tune in All next right. week. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. So we're gonna get into that next week. So guys, if you know anyone that um that has a, a problem in that area then you know you can share these uh these sessions while we're doing the facebook live and it'll actually go out and um and give people an opportunity to to watch and join us while we're on um so if you hit the share button that yeah you can do that and um and that'll get people to to join in on information that they might just that they might just have been looking for and just didn't know where to look so um, we're going to wrap up, but before I do, guys, if you want to, um, if you want to take advantage of the body type quiz that I made, um, I'm going to post the link to it at the bottom of um, the recording. Uh, take you to uh, a, a place where you can take the body type quiz. It'll ask you 
a bunch of questions to do with symptoms that you're experiencing, how you're experiencing them, and it'll um, spit out for you what your primary body type is, and um, and then you can and and then it'll let you know what you can do from there. So, Leanne, great to have you on, and thanks so much for your time again, and we'll uh, we'll see you guys next week. Awesome. Awesome, Karen. Thank you very much. Okay, Leanne. See you later. All right. See ya. Bye. Bye, guys.